The Arctic has raw power. Everything is so big here and untouched. People are longing for that, you know, like, what's my great adventure? For a lot of people, it's going north. It just made me feel good that I have done something to bring our culture back. I'm just proud to teach. I just want the kids uh, to pick it up in school, or the tourists for that matter. You know, anybody that wants to learn, I am happy to teach. I'm proud to teach it, for one thing, because it was a dying art before. The only thing that a lot of people would say was, when you want a pair of slippers or something like that, and some of my friends said, oh, you got to get it from Jean Marie, because it's done perfectly, and you know it won't fall apart on you. But this is not a sewing machine. I use my hands. We have a special connection to the land, to the animals to the environment. We are Canada's original tour guides. When the Anandjas came over here in the 1400s, 1500s, welcome, welcome to our land. Things didn't work out as we planned, but we were always hospitable. What I enjoy about it is meeting a lot of people coming from all over the world and talking to them, teaching them our tradition. And I like to share my stories that's been handed down from my grandfathers and my mom and dad. For me, it's about raising awareness and educating the people about our culture. I think it comes natural for us to be tour guides and to really showcase the wonders of the wilderness and Mother Nature. I like to let them try our food. We got so unique food, the way we prepare it. We feed them, we make sure they're full and they can go on their way. We're very unique people and we make sure you're full when you leave. As an Indigenous tour company, uh, we incorporate the culture into every aspect of our tour. So it's a city tour, buffalo viewing, canoe tour. We're always going to be talking about our culture, which is really cool. Virginia Falls in the, in the world famous Nahani National Park, twice as high as Niagara Falls. The thundering roar of the water coming down there so fast, you got about a 10, 12 mile an hour current. When it comes over that cascade, you, you can't even hear somebody standing right next to you talking because it's so loud. It's really hard to put in the words. You have to experience it. It's a natural wonder of the world. And we're so lucky to have it here in Northwest Territories in our backyard. Canoeing down the Mackenzie River, the same river that Alexander Mackenzie went down in 1789. The Mackenzie River, the Decho, is uh, the longest river in Canada, the second longest river in North America, and one of the top 15 rivers in the world. Mills Lake, I think, can get 20 kilometers across. 
20 kilometers across. This is a river. Canoeing, camping, and genuine indigenous culture on the mighty Mackenzie River. The pingos, they grow from the permafrost up. The permafrost ice builds up. Usually there's a lake around it and it'll absorb all that water out of the lake and then it'll get pushed up with the land and it'll grow. It's supposed to grow three inches a year. If that pingo is that big, just imagine how old it is. Probably a thousand years old, sitting there, you know, and growing. Whether you're somebody that is just getting into paddling, this is a great fit because now you can paddle where all the paddlers want to paddle. You know, start off with your first big paddling trip in the north. And if you're somebody that has paddled other places before, like many of our guests, you're familiar with Algonquin or Bower Lakes or you've done some kayaking, you know, this is a chance to be in a place that is so special and so unique. It's the north. It's the northern wilderness. It's a trip unlike you've ever had before. When the United Nations under UNESCO started naming different places in the world, Snohani was number one, very first World Heritage Site. Most of our tours, when we do day tours, people only get to see maybe 10% of the park on, on the flight. And they, they see a lot of it, but they only see 10%. The park is about the same size as the country of Belgium. I tell people about the park, it's like going to see six other national parks in North America. It's like going to see Banff from the Columbia Icefields, Yellowstone, Yosemite, the Grand Canyon, and Niagara Falls all in one. It's always an adventure flying out there. Yeah, it's pretty special.
This is ridiculous fun. A little terrifying at times, but ridiculous fun. Good job! Good job, you little puppy. Yes. Basically, you have the really smart, fast ones in the front, and you have the really big, strong ones in the back because they're the ones who's doing the pulling, and the ones that are really smart are in the front because they're the ones that learn how to lead the team. The world needs to see this way of life, just how beautiful it is. Everybody that comes up here and sees it through our eyes and gets to experience our way of life, they go back home with a better understanding of our culture and who we are as a people. I've, I've seen Aurora all my life, and I love to see Aurora every night. Yellowknife is the best place to see the Aurora Borealis. So, um, yes, you're in Alberta, you're in Manitoba. Yes, you can see the Aurora on the northern horizon sometimes. But when you, when you see the, the Aurora on the northern horizon, imagine us here in Yellowknife. We're right, we're right under that Aurora you're seeing. So we're right, wow, my goodness, right here. Well, we're in the very center of what they call where the northern lights are. So it, it runs all across the northern hemisphere, but the Yellowknife is considered about the very center of the, where you're going to see the brightest and the most often you're going to see the Northern Lights. We're so fortunate that people come to visit us. They come halfway around the world. You see the, uh, these girls, they're like 20 some year olds. And they're out there, they're making, you know, uh, angels in the snow. They're playing like little kids. If you're out here when the roar is out at night, you'll hear it. You'll hear how much fun they're having. They're, they just love it and it's completely different than the concrete jungle they come from. The odd time I've seen the, the Northern Lights where they basically just covered the whole sky. Yeah, you get them really bouncing around. It's pretty spectacular. It, all, it almost looks like they're coming close enough so you can almost touch them. Bright greens and purples and just dancing. Those are special to watch, even for an old bush pilot like me. The aurora was out and it was just beautiful. The aurora was just dancing in the sky. So I walked out of the teepee door and there was a lady standing there. And I said, you know, like the aurora, the way we've been taught is that when we were kids is that that aurora is our ancestors, our brothers, our, our fathers, our grandfathers that have passed away 
They're so happy, they're up there dancing in the sky. That's what the aurora is. I said, see all how happy those people are that are dancing. That's how come the aurora is so active. And she said, do you think that's only for your people or is that for all people? I said, and once you're in the spirit world, you know no color. Now, of course it's for all people. And then the lady just started crying. And then she says, thank you. And she was a doctor from Hong Kong. She had lost her husband five years earlier and she thanked me because she let him go then. Northwest Territories for us is called Dende, our land, our people. It's hard to put in words, you have to experience it.